Hi, my name is Duarte Antunes. I'm an assistant professor at TU Eindhoven, and I'll be briefly introducing my research on event-driven control. Let us start by recalling the concept of a control loop. Let us say that we want to achieve a given behavior for a system or a process which simply has a state x, a control input u, and an output y. The concept of a process is quite broad, and as an example, which I will use shortly, we can consider the control of the temperature in a room, where the state is temperature, the output is a reading from a thermometer, and the input is applied to a heating and, or, and cooling system. The goal of the control law is then to decide, based on the output, what should be the input in order to achieve the desired behavior. Let us have a look at how this process is actually implemented over time. This typically happens periodically with, say, a sampling period h. At time zero, the sensors are sampled, the control input is computed, and the actuators are refreshed. The process is repeated at time h, time 2h, etc. However, there are many processes for which periodic control is not a natural choice. Let us go back to the example of controlling the temperature in a room based on the readings from a, thermo a thermometer. Assume that instead of an automatic control system, which could eventually be implemented periodically, a human operator is directly controlling the heating and cooling system. Let us say that the desired temperature is 25 degrees, and the actual initial temperature is also 25. If the temperature remains 25, the human operator does not need to control at all the heating and cooling system, much less at every h seconds. Only if the temperature changes, say due to some event, such as a window which is open, will the human operator think on what to do and control the sy cooling system accordingly. Again, for a long period of time, the temperature might remain at its desired level, 25 degrees, until another event happens, say, the sun comes up. And only then an appropriate action needs to be selected and enforced. Again, another event might happen and the human operator is called to act. The controller in this case, the human operator, is reacting to events and this is an example of an event driven control loop. Now it is obvious why the human operator does this. It would be very time consuming to control it periodically. But why should a digital system always do it periodically or not? So basically, why do we need digital event trigger control systems? The answer is, of course, to reduce the number of times we need to close the loop. And this may happen in at least three contexts. First, we might have communication constraints. The process and controller might be physically distributed and we might have bandwidth constraints. For instance, we might be controlling an autonomous submarine over an acoustic transmission link, limiting the number of times per second we can transmit data. Secondly, we might be running a system with energy constraints and we would like to prolong its operating time. Naturally, if we are requiring such a system to wake up many times per second, it will consume much more energy than in the case it wakes up less frequently. Finally, we might have also computational limitations in our system that do not allow us to close the loop that often. If we consider a general control loop, how can we define the events to which the controller should respond to? The first idea proposed in literature is the so-called Lebesgue sampling. In the setting I am considering here, a more appropriate name would be Lebesgue acting, so let us use the terminology Lebesgue event user control. It can be explained as follows. Say that we plot the output of the system and we want to have a look at the control times. Now in priority control, one would partition the time domain with evenly spaced intervals and sample and control at these times tk. Let us plot the same output function. In Lebesgue event trigger control, we partition, we partition the measurement space, that is, the codomain instead of the domain. Based on this output partition or quantization, 
we actually control the system only when the output intersects one of these quantization levels. So this will correspond to this times dk in, in the figure. Now that once the output reaches some steady state value, the event trigger controller requires no more control actions, which plays well with the intuition we gain by analyzing the temperature control example. If we want to write down mathematically the times dk at which the, con the loop is closed for periodic control, this is simply dk equals k times h, where h is some period. For event trigger control, these times are given by the times at which the absolute value of the difference between the last output value and the current one at time dk plus 1 exceeds a certain threshold, say, d. Let us now compare the two strategies, periodic control and Lebesgue sampling, for a classical control example, the inverted panel. We start with periodic control, closing a loop at 1 khz. So 1000 times per second, the control input is being refreshed. The system is behaving quite well, and even it can even recover from a disturbance. Now let's try the same with slightly more than 100 Hz, so slightly more than 100 times per second. While the system is still behaving well, when, when the disturbance kicks in, we will see that it becomes unstable. So in this setting, we cannot stabilize the system even by closing the loop with 100, by, with 100 times per second. Let us now try event trigger control. Before the disturbance kicks in, the intervals between consecutive times at which the loop is closed are around 0.5 seconds. Or so. That means that we can control the system with an average rate of about 2 or 1 Hz. As we saw, when the disturbance kicks in, these times can go below 0.01. Overall, one is able to stabilize the system with a tremendous gain in terms of the number of times the loop is closed with respect to periodic control. Even trigger control does not need a large sampling rate. When nothing ha special happens, the number of times it actuates the system is small, but when, say, one needs to counteract disturbances, it can act at a fast rate. So far, I've been claiming that event trigger control is somewhat better than periodic control, but how can we formalize this? We can use a trade off curve. On one axis, we write the average interactuation time. And on the other axis, a measure of performance, which by convention we want to minimize. For example, in the inverted pendulum just described, one can consider the average absolute angle error from the upright position. If we plot this, if we plot this curve for periodic control, we would expect, and this is typically the case, an increasing function, meaning that the larger the interactuation time, that is the number of times the loop is closed, the poorer the performance. Now, if we plot the same curve for event trigger control by changing some of its parameters, say uh, the parameter d, we expect better res results. Uh, in particular, we, respect, we expect this curve to be below the curve of periodic control. This means that for the same average interactuation time, we would expect a better performance for event trigger control. This is clearly the case for the inverted pendulum, but one can also find systems where this is not the case. So the performance of Lebesgue event trigger control can actually be worse than that of periodic control for the same number of times the loop is closed. In my research, I tried to find event trigger policies that are guaranteed to result in a better trade-off curve than periodic control, and these policies are said to be consistent. It turns out that this is always possible in some settings, such as when the process is linear. These event trigger control policies are, of course, different from the back event trigger control. If you want to know more, you can find the Lebesgue sampling ID in this paper, two different consistent event trigger control policies in these two research papers. You can find more information about this research as well as download these papers in, in the research section of my webpage. Moreover, feel free to send me an email in case you have any questions. Thanks for watching.